This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on Atmospheric Science Playlist. We're looking at, in this video, orographic lifting. So how the air is lifted orographically over a mountain and what happens with all different processes linked with the air, with water vapor, with condensation rates, with lapse rates, cloud formation, latent heat, dew point, LCL, and how it creates a rain shadow effect on the leeward side of the mountain. So we have this orographic diagram, this profile view of this large mountain. Now I've done chosen a mountain that is extremely high in elevation. So I've done a mountain that at the top is actually 3,500 meters or 3.5 kilometers. So that's going to be in excess of around 10,000 feet of a mountain. So this really only applies to a relief or terrain that has a high enough elevation to really lift that air. So this is a form of lifting air. And the air is going to start at the surface on the left hand side with what's called the prevailing wind. This is the wind that has more consistent direction throughout the year. It could be westerly or easterlies or northerlies. Depends on latitude and location, but it's the air that's most consistent from a certain direction. So in this case, it is approaching this large mountain from the left. And we call this, this side of the mountain that experiences the wind is called the windward. And on the opposite side, we call this the leeward. So this wind, this air mass is 20 degrees Celsius at the surface. Now this could be through conduction and convection and conduction combination at the surface, also with the prevailing wind and air mass. So it approaches the mountain. It has to be forced up, can't go through the mountain or can't descend, but it has to ascend. So we have this ascending air, this rising air over the mountain, over the relief. Now we have here the elevations of one kilometer, two, three, up to top the summit, which is 3.5 kilometers. And as the air is going to rise, it's going to cool down. And this is called adiabatic cooling, which means that the air has a certain temperature, which is 20 degrees Celsius. And as it rises, there will be a change of pressure with that air parcel, and it's going to increase in volume, thus decreasing the internal temperature and energy inside the air molecules. Thus, adiabatic cooling is changing the temperature, making it colder through a change of pressure usually a decrease in pressure. So it's going to cool down. It contains our water vapor, which is H2O little g. And there we have our relative humidity. And all we know really is that it will be below 100% because it's not at the dew point. This air has water vapor in it at a certain percentage, maybe 20, 30 or 40%. But as it's going to rise, that humidity is going to change and increase. So the ELR is the average atmospheric temperature change with altitude. So let's say it would be 12 degrees Celsius per kilometer, is the average. However, this air mass is dry adiabatic lapse rate, which is D-A-L-R. Dry meaning it has water vapor and is not saturated water in the air. It's just water vapor. So this DALR is going to rise up at a 10 degree per kilometer lapse rate. So it stays warmer. So in this case, the ELR is bigger than the DALR. And that creates an unstable atmosphere where you're going to have lifting. And it lifts over this orographic situation, this location. And... Because the DALR is 10 degrees per kilometer, it means that the temperature will drop 10 degrees every time it goes up one kilometer in altitude. So we have one kilometer right here. So the air will start at 20, and it will go down to be 10 degrees Celsius. And it will keep rising up over the mountain. It will cool down adiabatically, as we discussed, and it will be down to zero degrees Celsius, which is impure water that can freeze. But in this case, we have it continue up to three kilometer altitude, where we have a temperature of minus 10 degrees Celsius. 
Now here, we have this horizontal dashed line. This dashed line is called the dew point, and it's a certain temperature in which you have condensation. And this is also called the LCL, which stands for the lifting condensation level. So that's the altitude at which the dew point occurs at. So the dew point in this case is out minus or negative 10 degrees Celsius. And this is where you have condensation. So you have your water vapor, which is our gas, and it increases to this point where you get the RH, which is relative humidity, which is the measure of water vapor in the air, gets to 100% at the dew point. And this is going to force condensation. So over or above any increase in altitude above the dew point, you're going to have a change of air. And now we have the SALR or the MALR. Now the S stands for saturated, the M stands for moist. This means that there is actual water, rain droplets in the air caused by condensation. And this together, both are interchangeable is a six degrees for every kilometer lapse rate. That means it slows down. Now, why is it slow down? Because we have the addition of energy put into the atmosphere that was originally inside this water vapor that was trapped there since it was evaporated on the surface from water. And this is called latent heat. It's hidden inside the water vapor. So when it condenses, that energy that was used for evaporation is now being put in the atmosphere, released during condensation, and that's going to slow down the air cooling from 10 degrees per kilometer, which is the DALR, down to 6 degrees per kilometer. So it's going to cause cloud formation, and we'll have a nice fluffy cloud. You have this nice fluffy cloud being formed at the dew point, rising up through vertical air movement because the SALR is slower, so it's going to heat the air and cause the air to rise, causing vertical cloud formation, different cloud formations, and different stratifications and layers of the clouds. And this latent heat is going to stimulate that. So now we have this humidity being taken out of the air and put into the rain droplets. And above the clouds, you're going to have a much drier atmosphere. So it turns back to being a DALR over here. So what will be the temperature of the air? So we have this SALR, which is six degrees. So the temperature would go from minus 10. It would still decrease by this lapse rate, six degrees, but that's per kilometer. We're going half a kilometer. So the summit is three and a half kilometers. So it wouldn't go the full, full six. It would go to three. So it'd be minus 13 degrees Celsius at the summit. So it gets colder by a slower rate because it's the saturated air compared to the dry air. So you have this minus 13 degrees at the summit. It's going to start to descend and turn into the DALR, as mentioned, which is the dry adiabatic lapse rate, which increases by a temperature of 10 degrees every kilometer. As it descends and it sinks due to the density of the air, that we have an increase in temperature down towards the surface. Now, why is it increased? Well, it's going towards the heat source at the surface. And it's also falling down, so we have a higher pressure than would on the windward side. So it starts at minus 13, so you're going to add five because it's a half of a kilometer so it's three and a half so at three kilometers not only go down or descend down half a kilometer so it's not going to be the whole 10 it's going to be five so minus 13 plus five is going to be minus eight degrees celsius then you're going to add a full 10 degrees because you're going down a whole kilometer back down towards the surface and this is going to be then two degrees from minus 8, you add 10, you get 2 degrees Celsius. So again, looking from the windward side, we've got 0 degrees at 2. On the leeward side, it's a bit warmer at 2 degrees. You're going to add 10 again for the 1 kilometer elevation, and this will be 12 degrees Celsius. And at the surface, we're going to have a temperature of 22 degrees Celsius. So slightly warmer than over on the windward side. But it's slightly warmer, but it's very dry air, and it's descending. So what happens is we get this, this very dry 
air that descends, and we have no clouds forming. Clouds don't form when you have air that sinks. Then you have no clouds, you're going to have no precip, or very low precip. So you get a certain biome, a certain landscape, a certain environment forming, which is going to be desert conditions. Now, this would be a warm desert as opposed to a cold desert, like in the polar regions, but this desert is going to be geographically located right behind a large mountain, which is going to cause orographic lifting, whereby the air is going to rise, form at the dew point clouds and condensation, and turn to the SALR and release lean heat. And then on the leeward side, it's going to be very dry and air is going to descend. So what we have is this warmer temperature, dry air, desert conditions. And for example, you have areas like the Atacama Desert, the Tibetan Plateau, and Death Valley in California, which are geographically located behind large mountain ranges like the Himalayas for the Tibetan Plateau, like the Chilean Range and the Andes Mountains for the Atacama Desert, which is in between both of them. And you also have the Sierra Nevada Mountains in California, which is creating Death Valley, which in North America is the warmest and driest place on the continent. So you have this situation occurring around the world. It's generally going to be in areas where this large mountain is blocking the wind and causing the wind to lift orographically. And you have the difference in humidities and dew points. And you also have this air descending, which is called adiabatic heating. So it's going to heat up because the pressure as you decrease altitude and go towards the surface, with gravity, you get a higher air pressure, and that will cause the air to increase in heat as the volume of air parcel is going to decrease. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.